Are you ready for a pixie book? Come on and listen in! With stories full of wonder, it's time now to begin. <laughs> Oh, hello, children. Are you ready for a story? Oh, that's marvelous, because I'm ready to share one. Oh, here's the storybook. <laughs> it looks like we're all ready. So, let's begin today's story. <gasps> it's called A Christmas Carol. It was a snowy Christmas Eve, and everyone in the village was bursting with excitement. Soon there would be presents under the tree, stockings full of chocolate, and grandmothers telling you how much you've grown. But there was one man, old Ebenezer Scrooge, who didn't like Christmas at all. His neighbors felt sorry for him and tried to cheer him up. Children sang carols in front of his house. His relatives invited him for festive meals, but all he would say is, Oh, go away and leave me alone. So, in the end, he got his wish and found himself all alone on Christmas Eve in his big, dark house. When it was time for bed that night, he said to himself, no, oh, only one more day and Christmas will be over. <laughs> Hurrah! And then, with a smile, he fell asleep. Sometime during the night, bright flashing lights woke him up. He had never seen such a thing. And just as he was about to pull the covers over his head, he saw a sparkling figure coming closer and closer. I am the ghost of Christmas past, the visitor said. Rise up and follow me, and I will show you what has been. Scrooge wasn't afraid because he felt the ghost seemed friendly. So he got out of bed to see what would happen next. Suddenly, they were in the countryside. It was like a dream. We can see others, the ghost explained, but no one can see us. In front of them stood an old school. They entered and saw that it was empty for the holidays except for one boy who was alone in a cold, drafty room. Scrooge gasped. Why, that's me, when I was a boy. Then he saw his sister run into the school. She flung her arms around the boy and cried, I'm here to take you home for Christmas. As he watched the scene, Scrooge wiped a tear from his eye and said, Oh, my sister had such a good heart. The ghost nodded. Now you understand, he said. That means my time with you has come to an end. The ghost sparkles slowly faded until he was gone and Scrooge was back in his bed. He was woken from a deep sleep again that night. Someone was knocking on his window. He went to open it and a figure swept into his room. I am the ghost of Christmas present she announced. She too seemed friendly in her long dress made of swirling snow. I will show you what is, she added. Scrooge reached out to catch a snowflake, and just like that, they were watching over a family enjoying their Christmas dinner. There was a father, a mother, and lots of laughing children. Their house was much smaller and simpler than Scrooge's, but it was bright and warm. That man works for me, said Scrooge. He's lucky to have such a happy family. The ghost of Christmas present smiled. I have something else to show you. Then, with the fluttering of her snowy dress, they flew outside to a narrow street. There, they saw a long line of people leading to the baker's shop. Some were laughing, some were singing, some were huddling together to warm up. They're waiting to warm simple meals they've received in the baker's oven, the ghost explained. Have they no homes? Scrooge asked. The ghost shook her head. No, but they have each other. 
Scrooge sighed and thought of his big, dark house. Someone should offer them a warm place to stay, he said. The ghost nodded. Now you understand. Then, spinning like a snow flurry, she rose up into the sky, and Scrooge was back in his cozy bed. A third time, he was woken in the middle of the night by a rumbling in the fireplace across from his bed. He sat up and looked toward it. Santa Claus? he asked. A slim, hooded figure emerged from the fireplace, brushing ashes off his dark robe. He shrugged as if to say, Do I look like Santa Claus? Let me guess, said Scrooge. You're the ghost of Christmas future. You will show me what will be. The dark figure nodded. This time, Scrooge felt scared. But he drummed up his courage and said, I know you're here to help me be a better person. Can you speak to me? But the ghost only pointed straight ahead and moved forward like a dark cloud. Scrooge understood that he was to follow. As soon as he did, they were on another village street. A group of people Scrooge recognized were chatting. One person mentioned a man who only cared about himself and wasn't nice to anyone. Another person agreed, yes, he doesn't share anything with anybody, not even at Christmas. Scrooge thought about what he'd heard. Could they be talking about me? He asked. He turned to the ghost who slowly raised a bony finger pointing at him. Oh no, cried Scrooge. Why do I only think of myself? Why do I never think of others? The ghost tapped the side of his head. The message was clear. Now you understand. And with that, he spread out like a gray fog and vanished. Once again, Scrooge was back in bed. But this time, he woke up to the rays of sunshine coming in the window. He looked around his bright room, then out the window to the snowy rooftops beyond. It's Christmas morning, he cried with delight. Then he jumped up, rushed to his window and looked out. He saw that same man that works for him walking towards his house in the street below. He opened his window and called out to him, Can you help me? I'm having a big Christmas party at my house tonight. There will be lots of food and presents and warmth for all. Invite your family. And uh, could you please tell everyone you see? I do it myself, but I'll be too busy making my home cheery and bright. The man let out a whoop and rushed off to share the news with everyone he saw. Being with others is so much better, Scrooge realized. I'm glad I have lots to share to make this the merriest Christmas our village has ever had. The end. Oh, <laughs> what a touching story. I hope you enjoyed it, and I hope you have a merry, warm Christmas. See you next time. If you want me to tell you when I have a new story to tell, just click on the bell. Hello, children. How are you? <laughs> Today, I'm looking forward to a very special story. Are we all snuggled up and ready to call the storybook? Great! Woohoo! All together! Storybook! Ah, here you are. Oh! Snow White. Once upon a time, as the snow fell gently to the ground, a beautiful queen sat sewing at her palace window. She was so enchanted by the wonderful snowfall and the forest beyond that she pricked her finger and a drop of blood fell onto a rose below. Ooh, I hope to have a child as white as this snow, as red as this rose, and as black as this window frame, she wished. Soon afterwards, she had a beautiful daughter whose skin was as white as snow, lips as red as the palace rose, and hair as black as the window frame. The queen, who was not well at the time, named the princess Snow White. 
Everyone loved the little princess, for she was fair and kind. Years later, her father remarried. The new queen was very nice to Snow White and helped everyone at the palace. She even fed the birds and watered the plants. The queen played with Snow White and showed her a magic mirror that could talk. Every time when the queen held the mirror and asked, Mirror, mirror in my hand, who is the fairest of the land? It replied, The queen is the fairest of the day. This was how the queen and Snow White spent their time full of fun and laughter. Then one day, Snow White's father, uh, I mean the king, called them both to his throne and said, Beautiful queen and my little princess, tomorrow morning I will start a long journey to another kingdom. I will be back after a few months. I know that you will be happy together while I am gone. In his absence, to Snow White's surprise, the queen started spending all her time talking to the magic mirror. She stopped feeding the birds and watering the plants. Everyone in the kingdom complained how the queen was becoming meaner and meaner because of all the powers she now had. Snow White felt so bad about it that she fed the birds and watered the plants all by herself. One day, as Snow White was passing by the queen's room, she heard her ask the mirror, Mirror, mirror in my hand, who is the fairest of the land? It replied, the queen was fairest yesterday. Snow White is the fairest now, they say. The queen did not like this answer and went red with rage. She ordered the palace guard to take Snow White right out of her land and into the forest far away, forever. Now, you see, Snow White had always been so kind to the guard that he just could not leave her in the dark forest all alone. So he came up with a great idea. He knew that his friends, the seven dwarves who lived in the forest, would surely take care of the kind and beautiful princess. He told Snow White about the queen's plan and his great idea, and they both set out to the forest together. By the time they reached the dwarves' cottage, Snow White was very tired. She put all the seven little beds in the cottage together and fell into a deep sleep across the beds. In the evening, Snow White awoke to quite some noise. Oh, heavens! Oh, heavens! The seven dwarves were saying, what a beauty she is! Snow White greeted them and told them how the palace guard had brought her there so she could escape the queen's plans. The seven friends said she could safely stay at the cottage. As the dwarves were worried about the birds and the plants around their cottage, they asked Snow White if she could help them feed the birds and water the plants when they went to work. Oh, that would be lovely, Snow White squealed with delight. Back at the palace, the queen rushed to ask the mirror, Mirror, mirror in my hand, who is the fairest of the land? It replied, The queen was fairest yesterday. Snow White is the fairest now, they say. This time, the queen went green with envy. She started a series of plans to make sure Snow White was not the most beautiful maiden of the land. First, she dressed up as a merchant selling silk ribbons and went in search of Snow White. When she found the cottage, she called out, Ribbons for sale! Ribbons for sale! Oh, I love ribbons, said Snow White as she picked a shiny blue one. The queen tied it so tightly around her waist that Snow White felt woozy. In fact, she felt so dizzy that she sat down and could not move. When the seven dwarves came back from work, they helped her feel better. One by one, they all warned her not to open the door for anyone ever again. In the meantime, the queen made her way back to the palace and rushed to ask the mirror, 
A mirror, mirror in my hand, who is the fairest of the land? It replied, The queen was fairest yesterday. Snow White is the fairest now, they say. Still, the queen screamed with rage, This time I will cast a magic spell on her so she cannot be the fairest of anything any more. The queen spent the rest of the day putting magic sleeping potions in some apples. The next day she dressed up as a feeble old fruit seller and took the brightly colored magic apples to the cottage. Now, Snow White knew she should never talk to strangers, but she had such a kind heart that she gave the weak old fruit seller some water. The fruit seller, uh, I mean the queen, handed Snow White a beautiful apple to thank her. As soon as Snow White took a bite, the magic in the apple made her feel weird, and she fell asleep. That evening, when Snow White's seven friends came home, they could not awaken her at all. The dwarves tried singing to her and called out in despair, but nothing worked. They wanted to do something special to keep her comfortable, so they built her a beautiful glass bed full of soft pillows. Then the seven dwarves took turns guarding Snow White. Every day they gathered around her and cried hopelessly. No, oh, what are we going to do? They sobbed. <laughs> Even the birds sang sadly, and the forest grew sad. One morning, as the seven dwarves discussed how to help Snow White, their discussions grew so loud that a handsome prince, who happened to ride by, heard them and grew curious. He went closer to see what was happening and was very surprised to see that the red rose in his pocket perfectly matched the color of the sleeping princess's lips. As he lay the beautiful rose next to Snow White, its familiar perfume stirred her dreams and awakened her. Everyone squealed with joy as Snow White smiled gently at the dwarves, the birds, and the handsome prince. The prince told Snow White that he had plucked the rose from a magnificent palace on his way to the forest. Together, they rode to find the palace where such beautiful roses grew. And guess what? It was Snow White's old home. As they entered the golden gates of the palace, the palace guard greeted them heartily and exclaimed with surprise, Snow White, oh, what an absolute delight. Come with me, there is someone you must see. He took her inside the palace, where the king himself sat on a glorious throne. Snow White ran to her father and hugged him tight. Oh, what a sight! My beautiful daughter, I cannot believe it's you! I was just about to set off to the forest to bring you back, the king said. You know, the palace guard has told me everything. And the best part is that the queen took off into the forest as soon as she saw me enter the golden gates. She knew how much trouble she was in for being so unfair to you. Snow White and the prince were very happy to hear this. The king thanked the prince and invited him to stay for dinner. As Snow White got ready for the royal feast, she spotted the magic mirror. She held it gently and asked, Mirror, mirror in my hand, who is the fairest of the land? And the mirror replied, You are the fairest of them all. Snow White smiled because she now realized that the magic mirror was praising the beauty of people's actions all along. The End Oh, <laughs> thank you, storybook! Didn't you just love this magical story full of special surprises? And it had a great lesson about being kind, too. I wonder what storybook we'll have for us next time. Until then, bye-bye. You know, if you click on the like and subscribe buttons, you'll never miss a story. <laughs> Hello, children. 
Oh, and hello to you, storybook. <laughs> ah, yes. Hmm. Children, did you ever feel so hungry you could eat a house? Well, today's story is about a brother and a sister who did eat a house. <laughs> well, parts of it anyway. It's called Hansel and Gretel. Once upon a time, there was a boy and a girl named Hansel and Gretel, who lived in a secluded forest with their father. The father had always looked after them, hunting and gathering food for them to eat, and keeping the fire burning on cold nights. But one day, he became so sick, he couldn't even leave his bed. Soon, there was no food left to eat, and very little wood to burn. Hansel and Gretel were still very young, so their father didn't allow them to go into the forest by themselves for fear they would get lost. But they knew they had no choice but to go and find some food and wood for the fire. So, one morning, when the father was still asleep, Hansel and Gretel quietly got dressed. They each took one piece of bread for their journey, leaving the last piece for their sick father and they set out into the forest. Gretel was afraid they might get lost and never find their way back to the cottage. Don't worry, little sister, Hansel said, for I have a brilliant plan. He showed her how he was crumbling his piece of bread and dropping little pieces to the ground so that they could follow the breadcrumbs back home at the end of the day. They continued on their way, going deeper into the forest. At times, they chased after rabbits and tried catching ducks, but they could never catch them. And by the end of the day, they were very tired and hungry, and all they had gathered were a few small berries. Night was falling, and Gretel thought that now they would surely get lost. Hansel laughed and said, <laughs> Don't forget about my brilliant breadcrumb plan. However, now that the moon had risen, they could see that a flock of wild birds had eaten all the breadcrumbs. Now they were truly lost. Gretel, who was very upset, said, Oh, I thought your plan was supposed to be brilliant, Hansel. Well, um, I never said it was brilliant said Hansel. I just said that it was a plan. But we all know exactly what he said. So, hungry and tired, they just kept walking aimlessly in the darkness. But then they reached a clearing and they saw a strange little house that seemed to be made of, well, food. Its walls were gingerbread, its windows were clear sugar, and its roof was covered with cakes and candies and chocolates of every kind. They ran to the house and started breaking off little pieces to eat. And it was very tasty indeed. Try the roof! Oh, <laughs> cried Hansel. Oh, it's delicious! This is clearly the best window I've ever had. <laughs> cried Gretel. Mm -mm. Mm -mm. This wall is the best, said Hansel. But both stopped eating when they heard a voice from the doorway. Hmm. Nibble, 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 no. I hear the clanking of a jaw or two. Who is nibbling at my little house? Is it a bear, or a fox, a rabbit, or a mouse, or two? <laughs> Hansel nervously answered, Um, no, it's, uh, uh, the wind. Then they saw a little old lady standing at the open door. Oh, <laughs> it's just two harmless little children, she said. Oh, and you must be very hungry if you're eating pieces of my house. <laughs> then the old lady asked them to come inside for some proper food and a rest. 
So Hansel and Gretel went inside the house, and the little old lady fed them milk and pancakes with sugar and apples and nuts, as much as they could eat. Afterwards, they lay down in two little beds and fell into a deep sleep and dreamt happy dreams. But when Gretel woke up in the morning, she saw her poor brother off in a corner locked in a cage. And when she looked at the old lady, she saw in the light of day that she was bent over with razor-sharp teeth and blood-red eyes. Why? Why? Why, you're not a nice little old lady at all, Gretel said. You're a witch. <laughs> yes, I am a witch, she cackled. Then she explained that she built the house out of gingerbread and cakes and candies so she could catch hungry little children just like them. She said she planned to keep Hansel in the cage and, with Gretel's help, feed him all of his favorite foods until he was nicely round and plump. Now that's a brilliant plan, said Hansel. Then I will cook him and eat him, <laughs> said the witch. Uh, that part I don't like so much, said Hansel. Gretel frowned and slowly shook her head. Over the next few days, Gretel had no choice but to help the witch prepare and feed Hansel all of his favorite foods to fatten him up for the fire. Hansel, Gretel whispered through the bars of the cage, we have to do something before she eats you and then me. Uh, don't worry, little sister, Hansel said with his mouth full, I'll come up with a brilliant plan. Um, but first, uh, pass me some more pancakes and chocolate sauce, please. Soon, Hansel was quite plump and round, and the witch started a fire in the big iron oven. The witch opened the big iron door and told Gretel to step inside and check if the oven was hot enough. But Gretel knew that the witch would just shut the door on her when she entered and eat her too. Oh, uh, I, I don't think it's big enough, Gretel said. I don't think I could even fit through the door. No, you're just as silly as your brother, said the witch. The door is big enough. Just look, I can get in myself. And she crept over and thrust her head into the oven. Then Gretel gave her a big push. The witch fell into the oven, and Gretel slammed the iron door shut and fastened the bolt. Then, as the witch screamed from inside the burning oven, Gretel ran to the cage and freed her brother. Hansel, we're saved, she said as they embraced. Oh, I told you I had a plan, said Hansel. What plan, said Gretel. Then, because they no longer had to fear the witch, they looked around her house and found boxes full of pearls and jewels. They knew that with such a fortune, they and their father would never go hungry again. They stuffed their pockets and left the witch's house. Gretel, who I think we can all agree was truly the brilliant one, followed the movement of the sun and the stars, and after a day and a night, they found their way back home. They rushed into the house and into the arms of their father. Oh, Gretel, he cried. Oh, I feared I would never see you again. Then he looked at Hansel. Oh, and who is this round little boy? The father said. It's me, father, Hansel, Hansel said. Hansel, said the father. It looks as though you've been um eating well. All part of the plan, father. All part of the plan. Gretel just smiled and shook her head. The end. Oh, I just love happy endings. See you next time. Did you like the story? Then click like. Hello, children. Hello, storybook. 
Oh, today we have an especially hair-raising story for you. <laughs> it's called Rapunzel. Once upon a time, there was an evil witch. She was a very lonely old witch. And so, to cure her loneliness, one day she did a terrible thing. She stole a beautiful baby girl and hid her away in a little room at the top of a high tower. The tower had no door for entry and no stairs to climb, and only a tiny window at the top. So the witch would fly up to the window on her old broomstick and care for the child. The little girl had the most beautiful yellow hair, which is why the witch noticed her in the first place. The witch named the child Rapunzel after one of her favorite herbs. After many years in the tower, Rapunzel grew into a beautiful young woman, while the witch grew older and even more evil. Her broomstick became so old and crooked that she kept crashing into the tower instead of flying in through the window. Rapunzel had never cut her beautiful yellow hair, so now it was very long indeed and the witch fashioned it into braids that could reach all the way from the tiny window to the bottom of the tower. Now, when the witch visited, she stood at the bottom and yelled out, Rapunzel, Rapunzel, let down your hair. Rapunzel answered, Surely, of course, I'll let down my hair if you tell me your name, if you say who goes there. And the witch yelled, It's me! It's me! It's always just me! Well, who else could it be? Oh, it's you, said Rapunzel. And she threw down her long yellow braided hair for the witch to climb up. When she was alone, Rapunzel would sing to herself for hours and hours. One day, a young prince rode through the forest quite near the tower. His name was Prince Handsome Pants, because he was a prince and he wore very handsome pants. The rest of him was very handsome too, especially his face, which was especially handsome. When the prince heard the song, he stopped in his tracks. He was enchanted by the sweetness of the voice. He had to know who was up in that tower, singing with such a beautiful voice. But there was no door for entry or stairs to climb. So he hid in the forest near the tower and waited. Finally, as night fell, the old witch approached the tower and called out, Rapunzel, Rapunzel, let down your hair. And you know how it goes from there. The very next day, when the witch was away, the prince stood at the tower and called, Rapunzel, Rapunzel, let down your hair, because, um, uh, it's me. And he pretended to be the witch. Uh, I mean, uh, <clears throat> it's me. So when he climbed up Rapunzel's braided hair and appeared at the window, needless to say, Rapunzel was very surprised. But she calmed down when the prince handed her his princely ID card, which identified him as Prince Handsome Pants. Oh, well, your pants are indeed very handsome, said Rapunzel, as is the rest of you, <laughs> and especially your face, which is especially handsome. And she gave him a kiss, and he gave her one back. And, oh, glory! They agreed to get married, which seems a bit fast, but it is a short story. I do want to get married, said Rapunzel, especially to you. But I'm trapped in this tower. Oh, what are we to do? The prince said he'd think on it all through the night. He'd come back tomorrow, and then we'll take flight. But early next morning, before the prince could arrive, the witch came for a visit to Rapunzel's surprise. Rapunzel, said the old witch, have you, my dearest, by any chance been seeing a very handsome prince with 
very handsome pants? The witch was holding the princely ID, which Rapunzel had sadly forgotten to hide. E. Rapunzel had never told a lie. Just this once, she'd give it a try. Um, well, uh, I don't think so, she said. The evil witch raised her hand in the air and flick, sliced off Rapunzel's lovely yellow long hair. Then, before Rapunzel could even say, hey, flick, the evil witch sent Rapunzel away. <laughs> Laughed the witch with a cackle and a twitch. You should have known, Rapunzel. I am not one to betray. So, I've sent you to the desert, and there you will stay. <laughs> then the witch heard a voice from below. <clears throat> Rapunzel, Rapunzel, um, uh, uh, throw down your hair. I think that's what I'm supposed to say. Oh, and it's me, the prince, by the way. The witch tossed one end of the braid out the window and down to the ground. She held tight to the other end and stood there, not making a sound. Then finally, with a heave and a ho, Prince Handsome Pants appeared at the window. Oh, uh, hello. Uh, uh, yeah, yeah, uh, ha, hi, stammered the startled young prince. I'm just, um, well, uh, uh oh. The witch smiled wickedly and said, Oh, I can see the surprise in your big, handsome eyes. But now, I'm afraid, the handsome prince dies. <laughs> and then she let him go. Down, down, down fell the poor, handsome prince. He landed with a shriek, oh, and a wince in a big thorny bush on his big handsome tush. No, no, he wasn't quite dead, but the thorn scratched him all around his handsome head. Even with that, he didn't quite mind, but the thorn scratched his eyes, which left him quite blind. Day after day and night after night, the prince wandered the forest with no direction or sight until one night he stumbled out of the forest and climbed a high desert dune and then slipped and fell oh, ooh, ooh, ow, ooh, oh, straight into the arms of Rapunzel who was able to recognize him in the light of the smiling full moon. She covered his faces with kisses and tears, and the kisses and tears must have been somehow magical, because somehow magically his eyes were unsealed and his blindness was healed. Prince Handsome Pants could see again. He looked at the beautiful face of his beloved Rapunzel, and he smiled and he said, Rapunzel, my fair, I just love what you've done with your hair. And they went off to his kingdom and lived handsomely and happily ever after. And as for the witch, well, her broom ran out of power and with no way to climb down, she got stuck in the tower. The end. No, oh, <laughs> I just love when everything works out. Okay then. See you next time. Bye-bye. If you would like to be a part of the Pixie Book family, just subscribe to our channel. <laughs> Hello, children. Are you ready for a story? Oh, wonderful, because I'm ready to share one with you. Oh, and here's the storybook. <laughs> ah, is everyone comfortable? Okay, let's begin. Today's story is called Pinocchio. There once was a kind woodcarver named Geppetto. He made toys for all the children in his village. However, 
Sometimes he felt sad because he had no child of his own. Then, one day, he had an idea. I'll carve a puppet out of wood in the shape of a boy. And so he did, and named him Pinocchio. Before going to bed one night, he noticed a bright star in the dark sky. Gazing at it, he made a wish that he would have a real son. As he slept, a blue fairy flew into his house. She tapped Pinocchio with her magic wand and whispered, Now, you can walk and talk, but if you want to be a real boy, you must always be honest and brave. And if you ever tell a lie, your nose will grow. To help you be a good boy, here is a cricket friend for you. Now, I must go, but if you ever need help, just call for the Blue Fairy. The next morning, Geppetto woke to find Pinocchio playing chase with the cricket. Oh, you can walk, he said. And I can talk, Pinocchio answered. Soon after, Pinocchio said to him, I want to go to school like other children. Geppetto agreed, but he didn't have money for books or a backpack to carry them. So he sold his coat to buy them, and he filled the backpack with lots of wooden toys for Pinocchio to share with the children. The next morning, Pinocchio put the cricket on his shoulder and left for school. On the way, he met a fox and a cat. Hmm, where are you going? The fox asked. I'm going to school, answered Pinocchio. Oh, wouldn't you rather come with us to a party? The fox said. There will be games and presents for everyone. Mm-hmm. Well, you can go to school tomorrow, the cat added. The cricket cried. No, 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 no. Don't listen to them. Go to school. But Pinocchio ignored him and followed the fox and cat down a dark, narrow street. From out of nowhere, someone grabbed his backpack and ran away. All his books and toys were gone. When he returned home, Geppetto asked, Where are your books? Uh, I left them at school, he answered. Suddenly, his nose started to grow. Well, what about the backpack and the toys I made? Uh, I gave them all away, he said, and his nose grew even longer. The cricket said, uh, tell them the truth. Be brave like a real boy. So Pinocchio told Geppetto the truth, and his nose returned to normal. <coughs> I'm so glad you weren't hurt, Geppetto said, and thank you for being honest. The next day, Pinocchio and the cricket left for school. When they were almost there, a colorful bus playing music drove up to them. Hop on for a ride to the Seaside Amusement Park, a clown called. Lots of free candy and ice cream and games for everyone. Don't get on, warned the cricket. You need to go to school. Remember what happened yesterday? But there are free candies and ice cream and fun games, Pinocchio said and jumped on the bus. When they arrived, he noticed something very strange. There were donkeys everywhere and only a few children. Luckily, there was candy and ice cream and Pinocchio started to eat his fill. Oh, this is the best, he started to say, but his voice cracked. <coughs> then he started to bray like a donkey. <coughs> the cricket watched in fear as his ears started to grow long, first one, then the other. Then his legs and arms shot out. Soon he was walking around on four legs, not two. Now Pinocchio was scared. Luckily, he remembered the words of the Blue Fairy. He could call her if he ever needed help. So he called, he Pinocchio started to panic. His eyes opened. He called again, he But his voice no longer worked. So he sat down, closed his eyes, and called out to her, with his heart. Just then, she magically appeared by his side. 
Because she could tell he was truly sorry for his mistake, she tapped him with her magic wand. And just like that, he was a wooden puppet again, who could walk and talk. With a sigh of relief, the cricket jumped on his shoulder. Just then, a man appeared to harness the donkeys. He saw Pinocchio and picked him up. What's this wooden junk? He said and threw him out into the sea. Pinocchio and the cricket bobbed on the water far away from the shore. Then a strong wind picked up and blew them right into the belly of a passing whale. Pinocchio started to cry. Oh, what have I done? Then they heard a voice. Don't cry, little one, it said. Come here and I'll take care of you. Pinocchio followed the voice, then cried with delight. Papa, it's you! Geppetto couldn't believe his eyes. My boy, I was looking for you everywhere. I even took a boat to search the sea and was swallowed up by this whale. No, oh, we're so lucky to have found each other, said Pinocchio. Now let's go home. Geppetto's joy vanished. Oh, we can't. I've tried everything, and yet here I am. Pinocchio thought for a moment. I have an idea. My nose grows when I tell a lie. So I'm going to tell a whole bunch of lies to get us out of here. Geppetto and the cricket looked very confused. Pinocchio thought for a moment and then said, mm, I love being stuck in a whale. And his nose grew. It was fun being a donkey. His nose grew even more. Soon, it was poking the side of the whale, who started to squirm this way and that, until it spit them out into the sea. <laughs> it worked, said the cricket. But we're still far from shore, said Geppetto. Pinocchio's eyes lit up. I'm a wooden puppet. I float in the water. Why don't I stretch out like a raft? That way you can sit on me and paddle us in. But it's so far said Geppetto. Why, you'll be too tired. I would do anything for you, said Pinocchio. You made me. You sold your coat to buy me books. If you can be so caring, so can I. Pinocchio's plan worked. Soon they reached the shore and lay on the sand to rest. After a while, the crickets started to laugh. <laughs> look, look, Pinocchio's changed. The wood became flesh, his wooden eyes became real, his arms, his legs, his face, even his nose all became real. He's a real boy now, said the cricket. And sure enough, he was. Geppetto took him in his arms and hugged him with all his might. My son, honest, brave, my wish has finally come true. The and da oh, what an adventure i hope you enjoyed learning how important it is to be honest brave and kind hearted <laughs> see you next time if you have a story you'd like to hear then comment below and i'll ask storybook if he knows it hello children hello storybook <laughs> it appears as if you came flying in on a breeze oh and wouldn't you know it our story is called The Lad Who Went to the North Wind. Once upon a time, there was a poor old lady who had a son named Lad. Lad means boy, and Lad was a boy, so that's why she named the lad Lad. <laughs> One day, they were both very hungry, and the old lady sent Lad out to the barn for a bag of flour so she could bake some bread. But when Lad came out of the barn, suddenly the North Wind arrived. The North Wind loves to play tricks. So he huffed and puffed and blew the flower out of Lad's hands up into the sky. Lad went back into the barn and came out with another bag of flour. Again, the North Wind blew it into the sky. That made Lad very mad. So he decided to go to the North Wind's house, which was far off in the north. 
at the North Wind's house. Lad cried out, Hey, North Wind, my name's Lad, and I'm very mad. You stole my flower with your windy power. I want it back. Me and my mommy are very hungry. Uh, I have no flower, said the North Wind, but I can give you a magic tablecloth. Put the cloth on a table and say, Cloth, feed me. Then the cloth will magically produce all the foods you could ever desire. Wow, said Lad. That sounds like the best tablecloth ever. Forget about the flower. I'll just take the tablecloth. Deal, said the North Wind. Lad took the cloth and started towards home. It was a long walk, so he stopped at an inn for the night. When he went to the dining room for supper, he put the cloth on a table and said, Cloth, feed me. Magically, the table was filled with delicious dishes. Everyone there was very impressed, especially the innkeeper. That night, when Lad was asleep, the innkeeper crept into his room and stole the magic tablecloth, replacing it with another cloth that looked just like it. The next day, Lad went home to his mother and said, Mommy, I went to the North Wind's house, and he isn't a bad guy after all. He gave me a magic tablecloth that will provide all the food we'll ever need. The old lady sighed and said, Oh, a magic tablecloth, huh? Okay, Lad, this I have to see. So, Lad put the cloth on the table and cried, Cloth, feed me! But nothing happened. Cloth, feed me and my mummy, he cried. We're very hungry. But no food appeared. Now, Lad was extra mad. So, he marched back to the North Wind's house. Hey, North Wind, it's me, Lad, and I'm extra mad, he cried. That was the worst tablecloth ever. It wasn't magic at all. So, give me my flower, and I'll be on my way. I have no flower, Lad, said the North Wind. But if you look around back, you'll find a magic ram that can produce a hundred gold coins. All you do is say, Ram, Ram, ram a lama ding dong show me the money. Then the gold coins come pouring out. Wow, said Lad. That sounds like the best ram ever. Uh, forget about the flower. I'll, I'll just take the ram. Deal, said the North Wind. Lad took the ram and started home. Again, he stopped at the inn for the night. Before sleeping, Lad tested the ram. Ram, ram, ram a lama ding dong, show me the money, he cried. And the ram magically produced a hundred gold coins. Lad happily hid the coins under the bed and fell fast asleep. The innkeeper had watched Lad and the ram through a hole in the wall. Again, he crept into Lad's room, stole the coins from under the bed and the magic ram too, replacing it with a ram that looked just like it. In the morning, Lad was so excited to go home, he forgot all about the gold coins under the bed. When he got home, he said, Mummy, the North Wind is a really great guy. He gave me this ram that can magically produce a hundred gold coins. The old lady sighed and said, A magic ram, huh? Okay, lad, this I have to see. Lad cried, Ram, ram, ram a lam -a ding dong show me the money. Produce the gold coins. We need money. Ram, come on. Ram! But the ram produced nothing. Now, Lad was extra, especially mad. So, he went to the North Wind's house and cried, Hey, North Wind, it's me, Lad. And I'm extra, especially mad. That was the worst ram ever. Well, it wasn't magic at all. So, give me back my flower and I'll be on my way. I have no flower, lad, said the North Wind, but I'll give you a magic stick. When you're threatened by an enemy, 
Just say, stick, stick, tickle stick, tickle till it makes him sick. The stick will tickle your enemy until he's sick from laughing. To stop it, you just say, stop stick, and that's it. Wow, said Lad. That sounds like the best stick ever. Well, forget about the flower. I'll just take the stick. Deal, said the North Wind. Lad headed home, stopping again at the inn. However, by now, Lad realized he couldn't trust the innkeeper. So, when he crept into Lad's room to steal the stick, Lad jumped up and cried, Stick, stick, tickle, stick. Tickle till it makes him sick. And the magic stick tickled the innkeeper until he was sick from laughing and he promised to return the tablecloth and the ram. Lad cried, stop stick. The tickling stopped and the innkeeper collapsed. The next morning, Lad started happily home with the magic tablecloth, magic ram and magic stick. Mummy will be so proud of me. He said, knowing that from then on, she'd always have enough food and enough money. And every now and then, I'll tickle her with the stick just to give her a laugh. <laughs> the end. Oh, that was a very fine story indeed. <laughs> See you next time. Bye bye. You know, sharing is caring. So feel free to share our stories with your friends.